This is the CNC Router Tips Podcast, episode number 12. This is the CNC Router Tips Podcast, a show which answers one question from you, the listener, about CNC router tables, CNC software, hardware, web hosting, and business. I'll help you get started in your CNC hobby or business and help you cut through the confusion. Today's episode is sponsored by TheMakersGuide.com. The Maker's Guide. Useful tools for makers. Welcome to another episode of the CNC Router Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Griggs, and I'm so happy you took the time to tune in today to our podcast. You could be doing a lot of other things today, but you chose to do this, and I think that's just fantastic. And apparently, a lot of you have been choosing to do just that um, in iTunes, in the new and noteworthy section for software and how-to, the CNC Router Tips podcast just made it to number two. I've talked to some other folks who've been into podcasting for a while, and they said that in a two-month span for a show to get to number two in a category is a pretty amazing feat, and I owe it all to you, the listeners of this podcast, because you're the ones who sent in your reviews and your ratings, and you're the ones who subscribed and downloaded this program, and that's what makes this podcast um, so successful right now, because you, the listeners, are taking the time to send in your questions, and uh, I hope that you're getting good value from the podcast as, as far as the answers that I'm providing. So again, I would like to thank each and every one of you who took the time to send in a rating or write a review or to subscribe or download this podcast. It really helps. Thank you so much. It's amazing to me just how big a reach uh, a podcast can have. Um, and a prime example of that is today's question, which comes to us all the way from Australia. Now, if you had told me even six months ago that I would have listeners in Australia, I would have um, had you check your temperature and make sure you weren't uh, ill because I wouldn't have believed it. But Mark uh, Sladden, and I I hope I pronounced that last name correctly, Mark, um, sent in a question about upgrading the spindle spindle motor on his CNC router table. So let's take a listen to what Mark is asking. Hey there, Bill. Mark here from Australia. Great job on the podcast. I'm really enjoying listening to your answers to some interesting questions and especially the guest speakers. I'm thinking of upgrading my spindle. I've currently got a 400-watt spindle on quite a powerful DIY machine I made, and I'm thinking of getting one of these 2.2 kilowatt Chinese-made water-cooled spindles. And I'm wondering if you got some advice on that, um, whether I should be going for a spindle that can do a greater range of RPM, maybe from like 100 RPM to 24,000, or is it okay to go for these water-cooled spindles that can go, that only do from 8,000 to 24,000 RPM? So your advice on that would be appreciated. Thanks, mate. Bye. Okay, Mark, that's a a great question. A lot of people, when they decide that they would like to upgrade to a high-speed air-cooled spindle, um, 2.2 kilowatts in particular, are surprised at the size of the unit when they get them. I've been running a traditional handheld router as the the cutting tool on my router uh, table. And my neighbor recently got a uh, CNC router table that has a 2.2 kilowatt spindle on it, a um, water-cooled spindle. When I went over and I was uh, surprised at how uh, large the diameter was and also, more importantly, how long it was compared to a regular handheld router. The 2.2 kilowatt router was over 11 inches long. And it was actually closer to 12 or 13 inches when you considered the water hoses and all the other things that were coming up out of the top of it. So it's quite a large piece of equipment. 
Now if you compare that with the 400 watt spindle that you're currently using, those are probably somewhere in the 8 to 8.5 inch range all up. So they're quite a bit shorter and they're also smaller in diameter. They're about 2 inches in diameter versus a 3 inch. If you look at how the power is rated, your spindle currently has 400 watts of power. And the one that you want to replace it with is 2.2 kilowatts or 2200 watts, which is 5.5 times bigger. So you have to decide whether your machine is going to be capable of absorbing all of that power and putting it to use. Um, and, you know, only you can tell whether, you know, you built it uh, strong enough to handle that. And also, if you chose stepper motors that are strong enough to lift that router up and down. You know, without more um, information on your machine, it's really hard to say. But a lot of people are surprised. They'll, they'll go out and they... Um, we recently had another fellow from uh, Australia uh, who bought a Shape Oco 2, I believe it was, from um, Inventables. And he got that in, and he ordered a 2.2 kilowatt um, motor for it. And he immediately put that up for sale inside of the group to, uh, just to try and get rid of it so that he could get a smaller spindle that would fit his machine because he had no idea just how large it was. So... Uh, that's something to watch out for. But if you do your homework and you look at the dimensions, most of the good listings on eBay show the dimensions and the sizes of the motors and the mounts so that you're able to figure it out. Another thing to, to look into also is how you will provide power to these because most of these uh, spindles, at least here in America, I'm not sure what the, the, the power situation is in Australia, but in the U.S., these run on uh, 220 volts, which is um, the heavy-duty circuit here that we run our washer and dryer machines off of. So most of the, our workshops are out in the garage, and they don't have 220 electricity out in the garage. So it's going to require you to run a new power panel out into the garage in order to provide power for that. Now, if you're... If your electrical system is, is different from ours and you already have that, um, then you're, you're all set. Uh, these, these motors come with a thing called a variable frequency driver, VFD inverter, which takes the uh, 220 electricity and converts it um, to a, a form that the motor can use. So it, it um, provides it the... Uh, current that it needs to to drive these motors so you know there's going to be some wiring involved that sort of thing so you know do your homework go out and look and see which situations apply to you before you make your choice you specifically mentioned that you wanted a, a liquid cooled spindle and if you are in a very cold climate then you'll want to make sure that you run an antifreeze through that liquid cooling system. You don't really actually want to put water through these because water will corrode over corrode the insides over time and rust it. You want to use an, an antifreeze and something that will prevent um, that rust from occurring. So many times if, if you're in extreme temperature um, change areas, some people will use an air-cooled spindle instead, and they're just slightly longer than the um, liquid cool spindles because they have a fan built into them, and those are great in areas that don't um, that are not desert areas. The main reason people go to these spindles is because they're so quiet in operation. When I'm running my router out in the uh, workshop, uh, I have earmuffs on, and, or I have ear protection on anyway just to try and cut down on the noise. And when I want to have a conversation with someone, we have to shout to each other to be heard. With these high-speed spindles, the liquid-cooled type in particular, you can hold a normal conversation while you're standing right next to the machine because it is that quiet. You just The only thing you really hear is the bit cutting into the wood. You're not really hearing the motor whine very much at all. 
Well, the air-cooled versions of these spindles are only slightly louder than the liquid-cooled versions. And so for me, it's a great alternative if you're going to use the, um, the air-cooled version um, as well. So I wouldn't rule out the air-cooled version unless you're in a desert area where the heat is already so hot that it's, it's not going to uh, allow the motor to cool any when you're blowing this hot air over the, uh, the, the insides. But if you're in a normal climate, the air cool is a great option as well. One other thing to consider with these uh, high-speed spindles is the quality of the, the spindle. There are several factories in China that are making these um, spindles, and there are varying degrees of um, quality. Some of them are very, very, very good. Others are not so good. One of the differentiating factors for these is some come with three bearings and some come with four bearings. And the ones that come with four bearings are generally advertising that fact in their advertisement because the four bearing uh, versions actually uh, are better quality because they have um, more bearing surface and, um, you know, they're, they tend to run better. They're also the newer of the designs that are out there. So, you know, that's something you you want to look at. Sometimes you uh, get confused when you look at the advertisement. They will say, with Germany bearings. That might lead you to believe that the bearings came from Germany, uh, when in fact that is not always the case. So you want to look very closely in the ad to see where they're saying uh, the bearings that they're using are made and the quality of the bearings but um, you know it's like anything you, the buyer let the buyer beware I, I'm looking at some eBay ads as I'm recording this and, and here's an example of uh, what you might see it says uh, air-cooled ER 16 collet chuck adopt Japanese imported bearing this is basically them saying that they got their bearings from Japan, which have um, good quality bearings generally. The thing that you have to watch for is the ER collet size because uh, there are different sizes. The higher the number, the larger the diameter um, that these collet systems will accept. ER8, ER11, those are small collets. They'll only accept small bits. Uh, then you, you start getting up into the ER-16, ER-20. You, 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 know, you, start, you start to get larger size um, bits, and you know, you're able to use a larger size bit. ER-20 is quite common with these. And Mark, in the last uh, portion of your question, you mentioned that you were considering trying to find a spindle that had a very, a very low RPM to very high RPM range. And you may find that difficult to find. Uh, most of the ones that I've seen are in the second range where they may go a few thousand RPM all the way up to 20,000. Very few of them get down to 100 RPM like you, um, you talked about or, or lower RPMs like that. Uh, reasons you would want one that goes at the lower RPMs is if you plan to do a lot of metal cutting. Um, those typically work better in milling machines at lower RPMs uh, with traditional mill cutters, and that's why you would want to use those. But the high-speed um, spindles aren't really uh, appropriate for using to cut aluminum. There are ways around it. There are special bits you can get, but that's not really what they're designed for, although everyone and their mother does use them for that. It's just one of those things. If you want to get the best finish, you use the proper uh, speed and feed and the proper bit for that purpose. And these may not be what you're looking for. Thanks, Mark. That was a fantastic question, and I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. Um, one thing to, um, that you could do to help out the other listeners would be to send in a picture of your uh, CNC machine. We'll put it up with the uh, show notes uh, so folks can look and 
Uh, we'll try and figure out exactly what size spindle's best for for the size machine that you have. Because your question was answered on the air, you'll receive a free gift, Mark. Um, we'll be contacting you via email to arrange how to set that, send that out to you. If you'd like to get your question featured on the air, we'll tell you how to do that right after a brief word from our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by The Maker's Guide, creator of the Triple Edge Finder. Get the edge you need, save time and frustration on your CNC project, and make setup a snap. Save time and material. Set up your workpiece on your CNC router table faster than ever. Accurately set your Z-axis height first time, every time. Automatically locate the corner or edge of a workpiece. Repeatably reset your starting point in the middle of a program. Quality crafted right here in the USA on U.S.-made CNC machines. Get the edge you need today. Go to www.themakersguide.com forward slash edge. The Maker's Guide. Useful tools for makers. I often mention many different types of software during the episodes and hardware and cutters, and it can get a little confusing. So what I did was I put together a page on my website, cncroutertips.com, slash resources. And on that page, I list all sorts of resources there from books to tools to uh, software, um, all the things that I use that make my CNC experience better and easier. And I hope you'll check it out. So again, it's cncroutertips.com slash resources. Now, if you'd like to have your question featured on the air, here's how. Need help? Ask me about your CNC router question on my podcast, the CNC Router Tips Podcast. I'll be glad to help or try and get you the help you need. I want this podcast to be a fun and personal experience for everyone and helpful. So let's keep it real and ask sensible questions. Please use common sense and show courtesy to everyone. That way everybody wins. Here are some guidelines to ensure that your question is qualified to be featured on the show. Please keep your questions under one minute in length. If it goes a little over that, that's fine, but um, don't ramble. If you have a website and URL, you're allowed to share it, but only once during the recording. Spammy or disrespectful or deeply private questions will not be considered for the podcast. If you need to ask more than one question... Just make each question a separate voicemail. Thanks again, everyone, for uh, tuning in and listening to the CNC Router Tips podcast. If you'd like to join our free mailing list, you can go to cncroutertips.com, and there's a link right there on the uh, top of the page which tells you how to do that. Thank you so much, and have a great day.